Hi, this is David Wood with Ag17. Over the past couple of months, we've received several requests from our Muslim friends to answer the question, how can God die? We heard this objection at the festival from our friend Hakim and from others. Then just last week, a young Muslim named Ali sent us a YouTube request with the same question. Stated in its full force, the objection would go something like this. Christians believe that Jesus is God, and Christians believe that Jesus died. So Christians believe that God died. But God is eternal and unchanging and all-powerful. What sense does it make to say that he died? If you're not clear on what Christians believe, this is a perfectly reasonable question to ask. In fact, Nabil and I get excited when Muslims ask questions like this because it gives us an opportunity to clarify the gospel. And clarification is crucial because very few Muslims understand the gospel. In this video, I'm going to do three things. First, I'm going to state the Christian view so that everyone knows what we're claiming. Second, I'm going to try to help Muslims understand our view by drawing attention to certain Muslim beliefs. And finally, I'm going to show why the Christian view has to be correct and why the Muslim view has to be false. In the first verse of the book of John, we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word was in the beginning, before anything was created. Verse 3 says that everything was created through the Word. The Word was with God, indicating that there's a distinction in the Godhead, later to be fully clarified as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Word was God, indicating that the Word was, by nature, in essence, God. Verse 14 goes on to say that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is referring, of course, to Jesus. So Christians aren't saying that God, as he is in himself, eternal and incorruptible, died one day. The Christian claim is that the second person of the Trinity, who is God, entered into creation, taking on human flesh, so that he could be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. That's what Christians are claiming. So how can a Muslim maintain that our view is somehow incoherent? Here, our Muslim friends might say that God can't enter into his creation, but as a Muslim, you shouldn't say this. In fact, if you say that God can't enter into his creation, you're contradicting the Quran. In Surah 27, 7 through 9, we read, Call to mind when Moses said to his family, I perceive a fire. I will bring you from there some news of great import, or I will bring you a flaming brand that you may warm yourselves. So when he came to it, he was called by a voice, Blessed is he who is in the fire and also those around it. And glorified be Allah, the Lord of the worlds. O Moses, verily I am Allah, the mighty, the wise. So the voice says, blessed is he who is in the fire. And Allah speaks out of the fire. Who's the blessed one in the fire? Allah. If Allah can enter into his creation and speak out of a fire, can't he enter into his creation and speak out of human flesh? The correct Muslim answer is, yes, of course, God can do that. He's all-powerful. Christians and Muslims then have to agree that God can enter into his creation. But perhaps a Muslim will say here, okay, God can enter into his creation, but if he does, how can he die? Good question. In response, let me illustrate by pointing out what Muslims believe about the Quran. This is a Quran. This Quran, according to Islam, has two natures. On the one hand, as the eternal word of Allah, it has no beginning, it was not created, it cannot be destroyed. On the other hand, this Quran is made of paper and ink and glue. These are physical materials. Now, on September 11th, a church in Florida is apparently hosting Burn the Quran Day. Ali, one of the young Muslims who asked us to explain how God can die, also asked what we think about Burn the Quran Day. For the record, Ali, I think it's ridiculous and idiotic, and I can guarantee that Nabil feels the same way. You can quote me on that. But it does raise an interesting question for purposes of this discussion. Muslims ask, how can God die, as if this somehow refutes the Christian view? But let me ask, how can the eternal word of Allah be burned? The correct Muslim response here is this. David, as Muslims, we're not saying that when someone burns the Quran, Allah's eternal word is destroyed. No, when someone burns the Quran, the paper and ink and glue that make up the physical nature of that Quran are destroyed. But the eternal nature of the Quran remains unchanged. Interesting. Let me see if I understand. 
the eternal word of Allah, which is uncreated and indestructible, enters our world as a physical Quran, which is created and can be destroyed. If this Quran is destroyed, Muslims won't say that Allah's eternal word is destroyed. They'll simply say that the Quran has two natures, an eternal nature and a physical nature, and that it's the physical nature that can be destroyed by burning. But how is this so very different from the Christian claim that the Divine Son, the eternal Word of God, became flesh and dwelt among us, that he entered into his creation as Jesus of Nazareth, and that once he had taken on human flesh, his physical nature, since it was created and perishable, was capable of dying, even though his divine nature could not die. My Muslim friends, if you say it's a problem for God to take on a physical form, which can be killed, why wouldn't you say that it's also a problem for the eternal word of Allah to take on a physical form which can be burned? This seems like an inconsistency to me. Please clarify your position, if you can. Until I get a good response here, I can only conclude that Christians and Muslims have to agree that God has the power to enter his creation as a human being, and that if he does, his human body will be capable of dying. 